This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Well, ain't this just sweet kismet? Just yesterday, I posted my bold prediction that NASA and professional science would find, well, I guess, announce life by the end of 2015, which means by 2016. And just moments ago, Nancy Atkinson over at the Universe Today put out an article saying... Nearby Super Earth is best habitable candidate so far, astronomers say. So we're going to dive into this article. That planet, the Super Earth, is Gliese 832C. Now, conspiracy theorists will note it has a 32 in it. And if you add up all the numbers, it equals 13. So there's that. And I guess they were so rushed, they forget the A. I don't even know what that means. Are they taking a slap at us astonishers? I certainly hope not. A uh, artistic representation of the potentially habitable Super Earth Gliese A32C against a stellar nebula backdrop. And the credit goes to the Planetary Habitability Laboratory at the University of Puerto Rico. Suave. Arecibo. NASA slash Hubble comma Stellarium? Uh, what does the Hubble have to do with it, man? Can we see the Hubble photographs? No offense. Artist, I mean, that's some fine artistry, but, you know, at this point, I know, I know. I should just stop asking for photographs. I mean, you'd think I'd be smart enough to learn, right? On a clear night, you might be able to spot the red dwarf star, Gliese 832, through a backyard telescope. Whoa, why can't I have my telescope in the front yard? Why can't I be on the roof with my telescope? I mean, obviously, I don't want to be standing in the street with my telescope, I might get run over. But I don't need you, Universe Today and Nancy Atkinson, tell me that I can only use my telescope in the backyard. Like, I need to be ashamed of being an astronomer. I mean, a pseudo-astronomer. As that star is only just 16 light years away. Today, astronomers announced the discovery of super-Earth planet orbiting this nearby star and say it might be the best candidate yet for a habitable world. You gotta love it when scientists use the word might. Gliese, A32C, was spotted by an international team of astronomers, led by Robert A. Whitmire from UNSW, Australia. They used high precision radial velocity data from Hops Terra, the planet find a spectrograph, and the Euclid Echel spectrograph. This star is already known to have one additional planet. A cold Jupiter-like planet. Gliese 832b, discovered in 2009. Well, fancy that. It is a warm super terrain. How bizarre. Orbital analysis of Gliese 832c, a potentially habitable world. Around the nearby red dwarf star, Gliese 832, it orbits near the inner edge of the conservative habitable zone. Its average equilibrium temperature is 235K. And similar to Earth, 255K, but with large shifts of up to 25K due to its high eccentricity. Assuming a similar 0.3 albedo. You know, I think albedo is means the sex drive of a planet. You know, like how hot to trot that planet is. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like we have uh, libidos, planets have albedos, you know? So... I think it's weird that science has a gauge for, you know, how horny a planet is. That's weird. Like, how would you know, you know? Since red dwarfs shine dimly, the habitable zones around these stars would be very close in. Gliese A32C complies with an orbital period of 36 days. Its orbital companion, Gliese A32B, orbits the star in 9.4 years. Wait, technically, it orbits the star... In one year, or 9.4 human years. You know what I'm saying, Nancy? I'm sorry, Mrs. Atkinson. The newly found super-Earth has a mass at least five times that of Earth's. Yeah, I don't think you need an apostrophe there. And the astronomers estimate it receives about the same average energy as Earth does from the sun. The planet might have Earth-like temperatures, albeit with large seasonal shifts, given a similar terrestrial atmosphere, says a press release from the Planetary Habitability Laboratory. A denser atmosphere, something expected for super-Earth, 
could easily make this planet too hot for life in a super Venus instead. And they were using the Earth Similarity Index, the ESI, a measure of how physically similar a planetary mass object is to Earth. Where one equals the same qualities as Earth, Gliese A32C has an ESI of 0.81. This is comparable to Gliese 667C, ESI 0.84, and Kepler 62E, ESI 0.83. This makes Gliese A32 one of the top three most Earth-like planets according to the ESI. It's kind of like CSI for planets, I guess. Planet detected. And the closest one to Earth of all three. Yeah, dude. If you can just figure out how to fold space like four times, you could have been there three days ago, man. However, other unknowns, such as the bulk composition and atmosphere of the planet, could make this world quite different to Earth and non-habitable. Or maybe they were like Earthlings. They were totally addicted to war. Then they had some vampire-type bankers who took them to the brink of the hyperinflation global currency event horizon. Didn't stop. They worked at fixing climate change, and then a couple months later, they had an all-out war where they destroyed the planet, they killed everybody, they ripped the atmosphere off, they tore holes in, and then everything was just foobar and dead. So yeah, maybe it has no life. Where was that? Man, I've gotten good at saying habitable, haven't I? If you've been with me the whole time, as I've been phonetically challenged on that word, well, I think I've conquered it. Other people who don't like my Texan accent will say, no, you didn't, dumbass, you stupid redneck. And I will say, dang, you are mean. How did you ever get so mean? Artistic representation of the potentially habitable exoplanet, Gliese A32c, as compared with Earth. Gliese A32c is represented here as a temperate world covered in clouds. The relative size of the planet and the figure assumes a rocky composition, but could be larger for ice slash gas composition. In their paper, Wittenmeyer and his colleagues noted that while solar systems like our own appear so far to be rare, the Gliese system is like a scaled-down version of our own solar system, with an inner potentially Earth-like planet and an outer Jupiter-like giant planet. They added that the giant outer planet may have played a similar dynamic role, I'm sorry, a similar dynamical role, dynamical, in the Gliese A32 system. Does that play by Jupiter in our own solar system? Certainly. Astronomers will be attempting to observe this system further to see if any additional planets can be found. And if you're interested in trying to see the star, here's our guide on red dwarf stars that are visible in backyard telescopes. Here you go again with your backyard telescope. Why do you got to tell people where to put their telescope, man? Why can't they put their telescope anywhere they want to? Why can't they take it to a field or a hill? Why are you trying to confine them into a backyard? That's creepy, Nancy. David Dickinson is doing it too. It's a whole gosh dang conspiracy. The universe today wants you to be ashamed of being an astronomer. And I throw up Thor News as a pseudo astronomer said, don't be loud and be proud. Wait, don't be loud or loud. It's annoying. Just be, take pride and honor in being an astronomer. Not as much as Astro Mutt to where you, you just become a pompous jerk when you talk to people. They're nearby, they're common, and at least in the latest exoplanet news flashes, hot off the cyber presses, they're hot. We're talking about red dwarf stars. Those salt of the galaxy stars that litter the Milky Way. They're everywhere. Man, it's like Universe Today is trying to wrap up all the latest videos I've done in the last week. Where I covered red dwarf stars. And I asked, is said to one? I got no answers. And I was like, oh my god, look at this chart. They're everywhere. They surround us, man. Of course, red dwarfs are big news as possible hosts for light-bearing planets. Though the habitable zones around these stars would be very close in. These miserly stars will shine for trillions of years giving evolution plenty of opportunity to do its thing. Once again, let me say, you guys have no freaking clue how long these stars are going to last. They are not a freaking car. They're not filled with their hydrogen like gas tank and they'll just run on down the road, man. You've never seen one born and you've never seen one die. Never watched one from birth to life, you know? Man, it's a good guess though, man, David. Okay, cool, sweet, I'm done. Crap, Barnard Star. Some people are like Barnard Star as Planet X. I was like, oh, really? Andromeda. Microscopium. Which, that was such a great word. Like, hey, dude, what should we name that one? Microscopium? Pictor. Draco. Draco. Malfoy. All right, peace out. Expecto Patronus. Yeah, I know. Okay. Alien space underwear in your face.
I, Thor of Thor News, be presenting this presentation.